Hello, my sergeant colonels. This is Carla, and I am here again in my backyard on a beautiful summer day, and I'm here to make grilled corn salad with a tomato vinaigrette. We're gonna get into the grilled corn of it all. People love to talk about the best way to grill corn, the shucking, the not shucking, the soaking, the tying. I'm gonna put all of those to rest, and you can stop the video right there if you wanted to and just slather some butter on your grilled corn. I'm gonna go one step further and pair it with a delicious tomato soy vinaigrette. It's got a little bit of miso in it. All of these umami pack flavors go incredibly well with the corn, a little bit of char, lots of crunchy elements as well. It is great as a side salad. It also wants to be scooped. And if you're scooping, well, the world is your oyster. You're just gonna have to watch to find out. If you try to grill shucked corn directly on a medium high grill. You'll get great charring. You will also get shriveled out really dry and chalky corn kernels. Nobody wants that. And if you go to all the trouble of half shucking and removing the silks and then tying them closed, you're wasting time. And if you are soaking the whole corn in the husk, in the silk, in water, you're wasting time and water. And Lord knows we don't have enough water as it is. I want to char the corn in the husk with the silks. It turns out that if you leave the silks inside and you leave the corn with the full husk on it, there's plenty of steam in the corn kernels themselves. So as the corn heats up inside of his little jacket, steam's gonna get released in there. That's gonna make nice wet heat. It's gonna plump the kernels. It's gonna cook through. They're gonna kind of steam inside. But by leaving the corn, the ears of corn on the grill for long enough to get some charring on the outside of the husk, eventually some of those char marks are gonna go through and you will get lightly charred corn that is plump and still really juicy. So grilling the corn 12 to 14 minutes or until I see really nice charring all over the outside of the husk. So if you love corn and you love saving water, like and subscribe for us, would ya? And you could just put a little corn kernel or the shower head in the comments and then we will know that you love corn and you love also water. In the meantime, I've got a fresh chili. This is a Fresno. The first time I did the recipe, I couldn't get a Fresno. I used a Serrano. It was totally fine. A jalapeno also works. And I've got some scallions. Some of them are going to be grilled. Some of them are going to be raw. So we'll take those guys and just drizzle with a little oil and some salt. The corn is going over medium high and it's a great thing to kind of get out of the way. So say you're going to grill some pork chops after this, or you're gonna grill some dogs or steaks or whatever. While you're waiting for the grill to come down to more of a medium level heat, you can get the corn started because you want a higher flame for that. And that way we're not wasting charcoal or water or time. It's all we have. So we're going straight on to chili. I'm gonna cut these, go on an angle if you want to. It should be whatever size you would like to find in your finished salad. And I'm periodically rotating the corn. I'm gonna do the same thing with the scallions and the chili until they're both lightly charred, starting to soften, a little bit of collapsing, and then I'll set those aside. The corn's ready to come off. Really nice charring. Some sides a little bit darker than others, but I have color on all sides and where it's like the darkest on the outside, you'll also get a strip of charred kernels. And it's nice to have a mix of some that are like sweet and bright yellow and plump and other guys that turn the corner to dark brown or a little bit charred. You've got multiple textures, you've got multiple flavors, you've got one dang ingredient. I know that I'm not the first person to put tomato and soy together. They're both like on the list if you look up like, what's the most umami of an ingredient? You're kind of stacking the deck. But tomatoes and corn are also in season at the same time. So if it grows together, it goes together. We love that. Fresh lemon juice, soy and lemon, two great things that go great together. I'm going to add rice vinegar. Soy sauce, use tamari. This is white miso, white or yellow, I think are the best choices. Something that's like definitely there, but not too robust. And you could use a blender, food processor, or immersion blender. People who don't like raw tomato, 
that's a major red flag. All right, we're gonna give this a taste. Mmm, good acidity. Maybe a little salt. And then add the sesame oil. I don't want to like aerate or heat up the, the sesame oil too much because we just want to be nice to it like any other delicious oil. Okay, dressing's dressed. Here's the part of the video where I show you how easily the corn shucks and the silks come right off. Look, look, is the silk making a mess on the kernel? No, it's not. Was that difficult? No. Wow, guys, that was easy. It's still hot and a little bit of charring. <laughs> Everything I said was gonna happen, happened. When it's raw, it's very bouncy. When it's cooked, not so much. So normally when it's raw, I like to put it on its side and do the old like slice away. When it's cooked, the kernels don't like drop and bounce in the same way. So I, I actually think whatever is easier for you, there's not a big advantage. I guess we could make corn stock with the cobs. I mean, I'm not going to, but like you could. At this point, the whole thing is gonna go right into the platter. You're gonna end up tossing this all around in those corn boats, you know, a corn raft. They'll get broken up. Let's do the chili. The chili has sat. I'm doing this with my bare hands. Be careful with that. And we can see how spicy this guy is. Oh, oh. <laughs> my God, it's very spicy. So then you just scrape your seeds off. If you don't want any spice, you could grill a sweet pepper, a sweet red, any kind of bell pepper, except for green ones, because they're disgusting. And we have the scallions. The raw ones. I'm gonna season this with a little bit of salt. I'm gonna start by adding half of the dressing. You don't wanna like over sog it out. The dressing holds really beautifully in the fridge. So if you end up not using all of it for this particular salad, you're not gonna waste it. The other thing I'm gonna add is half of my toasted salted pepitas. This is nice because the salad ends up being vegan and nut free. So half of those have gone in and now I'm gonna toss. Some of the corn is holding together, like in those little corn boats, which is really nice. I just wanna make sure everything is nicely coated. This looks really pretty and gorgeous. I'm gonna add the rest of the pepitas on top. So this way, anybody who walks up to your corn salad is like, oh, hello, pepita. Also adding some sesame seeds, which is lovely with our sesame oil, sesame and corn, sesame and tomato, like all of these things just to go an extra little drizzle of sesame oil, a little flaky salt. Oh, she's so pretty. Grilled corn salad is delicious. It's delicious on the side. Great, again, with all of the other grilled things because this is cooling, refreshing, crunchy, bright. So, so good. If you would like to serve this as like a corn salad salsa moment, it absolutely wants you to scoop it. It is happy to be scooped. It lays beautifully in the chip. Corn on corn, give me a break. I hope you will make it. I hope you will enjoy it. And I hope that it takes you to a magical corny place.